Hi everyone and welcome to lecture 15. So we are discussing principles of reliable data transfer. The slides are based on section 3.4 in our textbook, Computer Networking, a top-down approach by Kurosi and Ross. So let's get started. Let's recall this four layer model of the internet, the TCP IP model. Okay. And we were focusing on the transport layer. So we were asking these questions of what is the job of the transport layer? How does it work and so on. Okay. So recall this analogy that we used to describe this four layer model. So imagine uh, the CEO of company A wants to send some data or a big message to CEO of another company B. Okay. So assume that this message is very big and consists of maybe some files, lots of papers. So the CEO hands this message down to the secretary and conveys that they want this message to be delivered to CEO of company B. Now it's the secretary's job to send it across. So to do this, the secretary divides this message into packets, maybe multiple packets because it's a long message and then they are wrapped an uh, address, correct address is put on the packet and so on. And then the secretary uses the services of the postal system to actually get these messages delivered to the other end. So to make sure that these packets are correctly delivered, the secretary has to put the correct address, that is the pin code on the packets. Okay. Also the secretary may number these packets. Now look at the postal system. It's actually a network of different post offices, right? And there are delivery services between each post office. Some of the delivery services could be high speed. Some of them could be low speed and so on. For example, the delivery between these two post offices could be via a flight between these two post offices could be via a truck and these two small post offices could be via a cyclist and so on. So it's the job of the post office to look at the pin code and to route these packets correctly to the other end. Okay. It's not the secretary's job to actually worry about how these packets get routed. Okay. So now let's assume that these three packets get routed across, but a packet gets lost. So this postal service is not reliable. Some packets can get lost. Some packets can get corrupted. Some packets can get spoiled. So the postal office does not offer any guarantees of delivery. Okay. So let's assume that some of these packets reach the other end. Now here is a secretary sitting at the other end and their job is to compile all the packets together, remove and extract the message and then send it to the CEO. But suppose the secretary notices that some packets are missing, then the secretary would communicate with the other secretary using the same postal service that hey so and so packet is missing or maybe the secretary sends an acknowledgement to the other secretary that I have received packets 1, 2 and 4 but I have not received packet 3 and so the other secretary has to send the packet back and so on. So note that in this business the CEOs are not bothered. Finally when all the packets have successfully been delivered the secretary will extract the message and send it to the CEO. So this example uh, is an analogy, serves as an analogy for the four layer TCP IP model. So in this analogy, the CEOs are analogous to the application layer, which runs on the two host systems that are communicating. And the applications are not bothered with how the data is sent across. The applications actually are bothered with what the data is, how to use it and so on. Okay. The application layer takes uh, the help of the transport layer, which is analogous to the secretary in this example, uh, to actually send the message across reliably. Okay. The postal service in this example is analogous to the network layer on the internet. So the network layer actually is implemented not just on the end hosts, but on all the routers and switches uh, over the internet, across the internet. And the job is to route these packets using their IP address hop by hop and to determine the path that these packets should take and finally deliver them to the correct IP address. Okay. 
and the link clear is actually analogous to the delivery van or the flight and so on the job of which is to take the packet across a single link right so for example the postal office is not bothered with how the delivery van actually operates right or how the driver of this delivery van actually does the delivery is the job of this delivery service in a similar way the link clear's job is to deliver the packet across one link at a time and there could be different types of links with different bandwidths different speeds and so on just like in this example so let's focus on the job of these two secretaries which is analog uh, analogous to the transport clear what do they have to do they have to make sure that the message gets across reliably that means if the postal layer drops some packets the secretaries have some agreed upon set of rules for example maybe the secretary sends a, a confirmation or an acknowledgement via the same postal service saying that i received so and so packets and i didn't receive so and so packets and then the secretary has to send copies of the same missing packets back okay so that's analogous to the job of the transport layer so with that said let's move on to the specifics so let's recall the service models of the network layer in the internet so the network layer offers best effort host to host delivery of a single datagram so best effort means no guarantees a packet may get lost or corrupted no guarantee but i will make the best effort to deliver it host to host delivery that means you have to give the address of the host the end host that is the ip address and the network layer would make the best effort to deliver the packet to that end host okay and a single datagram that means the network layer operates on one packet at a time suppose the message is broken down into 10 packets and then sent the network layer doesn't care about the relationship between these 10 packets right the network layer does not know what is inside the packet the network layer just takes one packet at a time and delivers it so it might happen that these packets get delivered out of order some packets may get lost and so on okay so this is the service model of the network layer it's unreliable it's best effort it is host to host delivery of one datagram at a time so on top of this unreliable service model the transport layer offers a different service model to the applications above it okay so the transport layer is analogous to the service provided by these two secretaries to their ceos okay it frees the ceos from bothering with how the message gets across they have other things to do so it's the secretary's job to make sure that these packets get delivered reliably to the other end so the transport layer in the internet has these two basic services or protocols based on the need of the applications so the first one is tcp which is a reliable delivery service stands for transmission control protocol and the second one is udp which is user datagram protocol which is a very simple service which offers no uh, uh, no reliability and so on it's a best effort so let's look at udp first so the service model of udp is that uh, give me a message okay and a address of a process at the other end or a address of a socket so that means not just a destination ip address but also a port number and i will make a best effort to deliver that single packet to the correct socket so it just extends the service of the network layer with the bare minimum in a bare minimum way that is the network layer is host to host delivery and on top of that the udp just provides a socket to socket delivery so how does it do it using a port address so not just deliver so the network layer job is to deliver the packet to the correct destination ip address and once it is delivered it is uh, the job of the transport layer to check the port number and to deliver it to the correct socket on that and udp doesn't do anything extra okay it's just that so it's again best effort that means no guarantees so let's now look at tcp 
TCP does something more. It offers a reliable service. So TCP says, give me a message as a sequence of bytes and the address of a socket at the other end, that is the destination IP address and a port address. And I will split this into segments and deliver them reliably and in order, in correct order. Okay. So the transport layer has these two options to the user or to the application, TCP or UDP. Okay, we had discussed in the past uh, what are the benefits of one over the other and when for what kind of applications is TCP more suited or UDP more suited and so on. So the question we ask is how does TCP do its job? Okay, so here's the question we ask. Using the services provided by the network layer, which are unreliable, how does the transport layer, in particular TCP, provide reliable delivery service? Okay, so this is analogous to the question. So given an unreliable postal delivery service, how do the two secretaries ensure that the entire me message gets delivered in the correct order, even if the postal service can, you know, drop some packets or corrupt some packets. So obviously there has to be some agreed upon uh, protocol between these two secretaries, right? For example, the secretary at the other end may send some acknowledgements so that the first secretary may resend some missing packets and so on. So this agreed upon set of rules constitute this protocol. And in the similar way, we have a protocol operating at the transport layer. So in this lecture, we are going to incrementally develop these protocols. Okay, and we have an interesting assignment at the end of this lecture wherein you will actually code in these protocols and simulate them and test them. So let's get started. Okay.